Hello everyone, my name is James and this is Real Biased Gaming. In this video I'm going to break down every change in patch 3.8 for the champions in League of Legends. If you're looking for info on a specific champion then I have the times posted right below this video. The first big change here was to Annie, and that change specifically is all going to her ultimate in Tibbers. Uh, he got a lot of love this patch. First off, he's way tankier with 15 more MR and a thousand more HP at his max rank, so he's going to stick around a lot longer uh, in team fights and just in the game in general. The, the mana cost is actually really, really helpful, especially for the, for the first two ranks when mana can be a bigger problem for the little redhead as it is for a lot of AP champions. So she's going to be able to. Uh, cast Tibbers a little more often with the that increase there, and then he's definitely going to be able to stick around, as I said, a lot longer and deal a lot more damage to uh, to the enemies because he's going to be a lot harder to kill. So that's pretty exciting uh, for Annie. Just again, it, it's a slight buff overall to her, but I, I think this will, will definitely help her out. She is still uh, one of the best burst champions. She still has a whole ton of damage, and this just kind of helps keep her. Uh, her damage up a little more consistently, especially throughout a team fight when there's going to be a lot of AoE damage uh, for Tibbers to take, and so it's going to keep him alive, dealing damage consistently through that. Now, for Ash, the passive change ends up buffing her, it seems. You know, she sacrifices a little bit of RNG for a much more understandable and dependable passive here with the changes to her focus uh, for her passive. Personally, I think her first attack after five seconds out of combat should always crit, and then the more focus you have actually increases the damage of that crit up to a certain point. I think that'd be a really cool way to change Ash to make her a little better, make her a little more potent, and really give her that really cool niche where that first attack is going to be really, really strong, uh, making her slightly better when she's dueling someone, a a little better at the start of a team fight, a little better at the start of initiation, things like that. Uh, but this, it is a better passive than what we had before, um, so that, that at least is exciting. Moving on to Hecarim here. First off, Devastating Charge is now much improved and gives him some extra options for chasing opponents. He was already, you know, ridiculously fast, so it was usually pretty easy for him, but uh, its use is limited as far as where he can actually, as far as where the ability can actually help him out. I think it will have only a slight effect on his gameplay, assuming Riot is right in saying that there are only a few places where it will actually work. We'll have to see how it works in game um, and see, uh, just make sure that they got the distance right because I could see this you know having them having it off just a little bit and it actually being really really powerful both in the jungle in the river really anywhere because uh, it, it gives him a really really amazing chasing tool I hope it really is as niche as Riot is saying it is. Now Hecarim's ult was pretty substantially nerfed because it loses that 200 AoE damage for wherever he actually stops in his ultimate. Hecarim is still very, very good. The initiation is still going to be there for the ultimate. People don't grab him just for that 200 extra damage that his ultimate does, but it was really strong and probably uh, people underestimated it more than anything else, I'd say. Uh, for Hecarim players though, this is probably gonna feel a lot worse than it actually is in game but people who are going to play him uh, who play him a lot are definitely going to notice this change when they do get on the battlefield. Now for Karma, for her inner flame ability, or Q, well, uh, I mean, a buff is a buff, so this does help, but it will be barely noticeable, I feel. The mana cost reduction will help a little when spamming late game, and the radius increase is going to help uh, quite a bit, especially, I think, early game when champions are going to be a little slower, going to have a harder time getting out of it with that increased radius. Now, focused resolve... Wow, this is an amazing self-heal tool. This is going to make her a much more terrifying duelist. I, really, a truly terrifying duelist. I mean, if anything, if everything connects, Karma can now gain 15% more of her missing health than she could before. And she is always guaranteed now to regen 20% of her missing health the moment the ability lands. I, I'm going to go ahead and call it right now. Karma is going to be mid a lot and she's going to be very very hard to kill. I don't know if I don't know if I would bet on this part, but I would not be surprised to see her in the LCS coming up here. This this single change could really turn her around. This is incredible. Just a single cast a spell on an opponent that slows him down and then just immediately heals you for 20% has a chance to heal you for another 20% of your total missing health. Now, Kha'Zix, these changes, I did some number crunching for us. So let's actually walk through this. So before, 
If Kha'Zix has 100 bonus attack damage, his max rank Q on an isolated target would hit for 480 damage. Now it's going to hit for 493 damage. So that's a gain of 13 total damage. That's not really a lot. Now, going for a bigger number here, it, uh, before, if Kha'Zix has 300 bonus attack damage, his max rank Q on an isolated target would hit for 880 damage, whereas now it's going to hit for 928 damage. So that's a gain of 48 damage overall. Uh, so there you can see. So any anywhere from a gain of like 10 to about 50 total attack damage, depending on where whether you have one, two, or five damage items on Kha'Zix. Now, these do not sound like large increases, and I, I really agree. It really does not make up for the nerf on his Void Spikes, the damage that you would actually get from that. It really outweighs the damage now you're gaining on your Q. Now, really quickly, I want to go over the nerf to his W. The slow has been reduced by 5%, so that's not a big deal. The mana cost has been reduced by 25% of mass, max rank, so that's actually pretty nice. Also, the attack damage ratio was increased, so that's really helpful. Uh, the big nerf is taking away the passive proc when he's shooting the Void Spikes. That's the big obvious one. Now, to put it simply, the nerf in overall damage is actually pretty slight. It just depends on where the damage is coming from. It's no longer coming from a range shot from his void spikes. It's going to be coming in from close quarters. But overall, his damage output didn't change a whole ton. Kha'Zix gets to deal a lot more damage up close, if, especially if you evolve his Q, dealing 8% of the target's missing health no matter what, in addition to the gains that I already mentioned earlier. So that's, that's ignoring an, an isolated enemy, you're always going to be dealing 8% of the target's missing health. That's pretty helpful. Uh, the real nerf here, again, is that he is not as effective dealing damage at range. This is going to affect his play style, there's no question, but Riot did ensure that up close, Kha'Zix is going to be more deadly, especially if you choose to evolve his Q. If you play him the same way as he has been played throughout Season 3, he's, he's simply going to deal a lot less damage even with an evolved Void, uh, void Spike shot. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how Kha'Zix goes, whether people are really going to change up and start evolving Q or not. Um, if they don't, again, like I said, he's just going to deal, he's going to be dealing less damage. If they do really get that Q early, it's going to be inter interesting to see how well that plays out uh, with him attacking people uh, close range. Now, Lissandra got some healthy buffs in 3.8, and to be completely honest, I never thought she was that far off of the mark. Her W got a lot stronger early with a 30% decrease in the mana cost and a shorter cooldown. Also, her E, uh, Glacial Path, got a slight buff on its cooldown as well. Her ultimate actually became a lot stronger. She loses 50 base damage rank 2 and 100 base damage rank 3, but she gets 100% increase to the giant area effect slow at rank three which is huge I mean, that slow is going to be insane and also the untargetable effect was increased by a full second when she casts it on herself with the uh, zonia's effect if she uses her ultimate on herself and still gets that giant powerful slow she has a very high burst as well as highly consistent damage with an aoe root a huge aoe slow and a skill uh, skill shot slow yeah i already thought people underestimated her and now she's just this much stronger so Juani got taken a back a few steps. She's still a very strong jungler and a serious CC tank, though. She deals slightly less damage with her W. Mostly this will be noticed late game when you have a lot of bonus health, but she wasn't dealing a whole ton of damage late game anyway, so I think this change is going to be just fine. Her slow from her E and the slow and stun from her ultimate are still potent, but last a half second and then a quarter of a second shorter, uh, respectively. Now moving on to Sona. The changes here to Sona make her a stronger pick while at the same time lowering the buffs she can give to allies. Much like Tarek's armor aura, Sona's Aria of Perseverance now grants much less armor and MR to nearby allies and the allies she heals. Now these bonus stats were really powerful, especially near the middle of the laning phase, so now that's going to be back with the other kind of buffing supports like Tarek and Soraka. The power cord also deals slightly more damage late game, so really that's going to be barely noticeable. Again, late game support dealing just a little more damage, it's not going to be any kind of game changing at all. What is nice is the 40 extra health and the two extra base armor that she's going to get. A, a more survivable Sona it really does make up for the slight loss in aura buffs to her allies. 
And that will do it for the champion changes in patch 3.8 for League of Legends. Feel free to ask questions or make your objections to my views on the patch heard by posting a comment. And if you enjoy discussing League of Legends, then definitely subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. Once again, my name is James, and this is Real Biased Gaming.